from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome to everyone, and especially to those whose visit uh, is the first here at the library, and I hope it will be the first of many to come. So you're very welcome, and I'm speaking about Kay and Joe's guests who have brought them here, and I hope they return often. Well, I'm Mary Jane Deep, Chief of the African Middle East Division, and I just want to say a few words. Some of you have already heard them, but I say them anyway. Uh, the African Middle East Division is divided into three sections. We have the Hebraic section, the African uh, section, and the Near East section. We're responsible for materials from 78 different countries of the world, uh, which cover the whole continent of Africa, North and Sub-Saharan, Central Asia, all the stands, and uh, the Caucasus, Armenia and Georgia, and of course, uh, the whole Arab world, Persia and uh, Turkey, Iran and Turkey. So we're very active, and we're active in acquiring collections, in developing our collections, in briefing our visitors coming from all the countries of the region and coming from all over the United States and coming from all over the world. Uh, we organize programs such as the one today. We have symposia, we have workshops, we show films, we have music programs. Uh, we especially like to invite scholars and experts as we have today who have researched and done work on our countries of responsibility so that they can share with us their insights and their findings and so that all of us attending and participating in the programs leave enriched with new information and a better understanding of the cultures and societies whose publications we collect and we serve. Today we have a scholar, writer, photographer, Esubalu Meeza the author of Inspiring Journal and his latest book entitled Addis Ababa, The New Flower of Africa. He will discuss with us his travels through Ethiopia. After many years abroad, Mr. Meza returned to Ethiopia and rediscovered its capital, Addis Ababa, where he was born and raised. In a media interview, he described his experience and knowledge of Ethiopia when he first left his country as embryonic. And now, through his very thorough recent travels, he has been able to learn so much and to be able, of course, for us in this presentation, to share with us his insights into Ethiopia, the country, the culture, its treasures, including its cities, monuments, museums, parks, religious sites. Through the eyes and writings of our speakers, our programs are enriched, our books come to life, and our 78 countries are no longer just places on a map, but living, breathing entities that are rich in history and culture, and that are in an intrinsic part of today's global civilization. And now to introduce our speaker is our own Fentahun Tirune, the specialist for Ethiopia and Eritrea here in the African Middle East Division of the Library of Congress. Is a librarian and a scholar who has single-handedly built the Ethiopian collection at the Library of Congress into one of the best in the United States and perhaps in the world. So, Bentahun, thank you. Thank you, Mary Jean. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before I introduce our uh, guest of today, I would like to make a couple of announcements. The first is about uh, the video recording uh, that's taking place. And this event is being videotaped and uh, for subsequent broadcasts on the library's uh, web, web, webcast and other media. There will be a formal question and answer period after the lecture in which the audience is encouraged to ask questions 
and offer comments, but uh, please be advised that your voice and image may be recorded and later broadcast as part of this event. By participating in the question and answer period, you are consenting to the library's <coughs> possible reproduction and transmission of your remark. The second announcement is about uh, uh, the reception that will follow after uh, the event is over. And this reception uh, was offered by uh, Isubalo, you can call him Isu. Uh, and it looks very good uh, in the conference room, so I, I hope you participate in that. And I will now introduce uh, the speaker, our tourist. Isubalo, or Isu Maaza, is a travel photographer and writer who uses his realistic and engaging images to tell the story of his native country, Ethiopia. Though originally trained as a software engineer, he has been using his hobby in photography and writing talent to tell the stories of Ethiopia for over a decade. Born in Addis Ababa, Isu first returned to Ethiopia in 2002 after a 15-year stay in the United States and quickly developed an interest in exploring for a better understanding of the cultures, landscapes, and people of, the na of his native country. Thereafter, <coughs> every trip he made ex expanded his ultimate goal to know his homeland. The collection of pictures in his first book, published in 2012, entitled Ethiopia Inspiring Journey, introduced his readers to Ethiopia's vast tourism properties and culture. Among many locations, he took his readers to a northern expedition where Ethiopia's long history came alive with such reminders as Aksum, Gondar, and Lalibela. His second book, published in June 2012, entitled Addis Ababa, The New Flower of Africa, covers the city of Addis Ababa and further explores Ethiopia in all directions. His ability to showcase the culture, history, landscape, and people of Ethiopia through clarity and style makes his books not only quaint, but also highly informative. Esu has a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering, and a master's degree in enterprise science systems engineering. He is a 20-year veteran in the field of information technology and is currently working as a technical project manager for Virginia-based IT firm. Please help me welcome Subalo. Um, thank you very much, um, Mary J, and thank you, Fantown, for these kind words. It's a pleasure and a great privilege to be standing in front of you and share my experiences of my trip uh, throughout Ethiopia. But before, before I get started, I want to kind of touch on what Mary J was talking about earlier. Uh, uh, I've done some of my research in here, in this room, in this library, and the wealth of information that I found here is, uh, is beyond what I expected uh, when I first walked in about four years ago, I guess now, right? So uh, thank you, Mr. Fantown, for uh, introducing me to relevant books, uh, articles about Ethiopia, and also thank you, Library of Congress, for a uh, collection, massive collection of uh, articles and books about Ethiopia and uh, such an inspiring environment. <clears throat> so let me introduce myself. <laughs> So, my name is uh, Asubalo Maaza, and lucky for you, I do have a shorter version of my name, so you can call me Isu. Uh, my story is very simple. I was born in uh, Ethiopia and uh, traveled uh, to the uh, United States at the beginning of my high school age, uh, about uh, ninth grade. And then, since, uh, ever since 2002, I've been traveling back to Ethiopia to rediscover and reconnect uh, with the country and with the people and the culture. Uh, I am an uh, information technology engineer. I've been in that field for about 20 years now. Uh, on 2000, 2005 trip to Ethiopia, I kind of developed uh, an interest to capture uh, and tell the story of uh, Ethiopia. 
uh, in pictures and stories. That kind of became my passion for the last uh, 11 years. And it, it not only became a passion, but it kind of resulted in uh, two books that uh, Fantown was talking about earlier. One is a 2012 book called uh, Ethiopia Inspiring Journey. And the second one is a 2015 book, which is about, uh, you know, came out about June of 2015, uh, about the city of Addis Ababa, uh, entitled Addis Ababa, the New Flower of Africa. Uh, you may be uh, intrigued about that picture that you're looking at on the screen. I promise that I will go into this, uh, this presentation toward, towards the uh, middle of the presentation, I'll explain. But for now, let's just say uh, I was just having you know, a good, good dinner with uh, a friend of mine in the eastern part of Ethiopia. <clears throat> so I do have two goals for this uh, presentation today. My first goal is to share my experiences with you um, about my travels throughout Ethiopia. But my second goal is to tell you enough about Ethiopia so you could uh, maybe consider uh, Ethiopia as part of your vacation destination one of these days. Maybe next year, the year after that, but uh, let's see. Let's see what we can do. All right, so one of the attributes that makes, uh, at least from what, what I understand, what I've seen, uh, that makes Ethiopia uh, a very interesting and uh, unique tourism magnet is the fact that it has different type of tourism that you can experience. Uh, you're, not, you're not limited to just looking at nature or uh, wildlife or history, but you have uh, uh, different types. For example, if you're talking about nature, you can travel to any direction of Ethiopia, and I guarantee you that you are surrounded by natural beauty that you will admire and you'll be uh, most probably taking uh, all kind of pictures of. For example, if you go to the north, you have the Samin, Na Samin National Mountain Park with the highest peak, which is the uh, third largest in, uh, in Africa and the first in Ethiopia. You can actually um, uh, climb that, that highest peak called Ras Dashen. Uh, if you go to the south, you have the White, uh, White Grass National Park in Amharic is called Nechasar. Amharic, by the way, is the Ethiopian language. If you go to the west, you have the uh, Birds Place of Coffee. Um, what else can I say about that? I mean. And if you go to the east, you have places like the Babile, where you, uh, you have natural rock formation. Um, you can actually get close and take pictures of and uh, um, hike. If you're talking about history and you're, you're interested in history, you have places like the 1,700 uh, years, years old obelisks decorated with uh, uh, designs of the past. You have the 12th century replica of Jerusalem, or our own version of Jerusalem. Those are the 11 rock-hewn churches of Lalibala, or you have the 7th century site of the first mosque in, in Africa. Culture-wise, you have places like the South. I would, I would only characterize it as the mecca of, uh, of culture. Uh, you have uh, over, I personally met at least 15 or over 15 uh, different tribes and cultures and uh, uh, ways of living and uh, designs of homes, food. So it is, um, it is a, a culture of Mecca uh, when you go to the South. Uh, I'm not saying when you go to the North you don't find culture, but I'm kind of just telling you uh, South is where you want to be if you, if, you, if you are interested in culture. Adventure-wise, I'll share with you later on. I have uh, places like the Ertale. Uh, where else can you get extremely close to an active volcano and, uh, and, 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 and take pictures and uh, experience uh, uh, the power of a volcano? Or just like the introduction, um, the eastern part of Ethiopia where you can go, take a picture with, uh, with a wild animal and come, come home safe. And of course, when, when you're talking about wildlife viewing, uh, you do, um, I can't even point a direction for you because you can go to any part, part of Ethiopia, any national park, and you're not only going to experience uh, wildlife that you've seen in different parts of the world, but also endemic animals such as uh, the red fox, Niala, Ibex, and bleeding heart baboon, which you will see pictures later on. And if you're uh, into uh, doing absolutely nothing, and you do have places like Hawassa and uh, Bahardar where you can actually just go and, uh, and um, do uh, absolutely nothing and just watch sunset or sunrises and uh, enjoy. 
So just remember this slide because I, we, we are going to conclude with this slide uh, and you will be the judge if, uh, uh, if I've shown you enough um, about uh, nature, culture, adventure, wildlife, and relaxation. So just to kind of give you a, a little understanding, the presentation is divided in two parts. The first part is going to give you a virtual view, a virtual uh, basically, I'm taking you uh, with me to all directions of Ethiopia virtually. Uh, the second part is trying to answer a question that everybody asks me um, when, when, when they meet me and they know that you know, I've traveled throughout Ethiopia. The first thing they ask me is, what is your favorite part? So I'm going to try to answer. It's been a, a very difficult uh, uh, question to answer, but today, just for you, I have 10 different experiences that I'm going to share with you uh, that I would... Um, I would say are my favorite parts of uh, the travels. Uh, we are going to use Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa, by the way, is the capital city of Ethiopia. It is located somewhere in the middle of the, uh, the country. So when we talk about north, then we're talking about north of Addis Ababa, south, east, and west uh, the same way. And there is one more word that I'll be using, which is the uh, UNESCO, um, uh, which is the United States Education, Science, and Culture Organization. This is an organization that identifies cultural sites, uh, cultural events, places, uh, and puts them as uh, a World Heritage Site. So I'll be mentioning some, you know, when I show you pictures of different places, I'll tell you if these sites are part of the list or not. Uh, it is, uh, the, the slide you're about to see is, <coughs> excuse me, about a seven or eight minute slide. But as a disclaimer, Ethiopia is a very large country. Uh, it is about twice the size of uh, France. So trying to present Ethiopia as a whole Ethiopia in about eight minute slide or a 40 minute talk is, is, is gonna be very difficult. So if I don't, do talk um, a little faster and underemphasize some places, please do ask me later on in the uh, Q&A um, uh, and afterward in the uh, receptions as well. All right, just give me one second, sorry. So we're going to start from the northern part of Ethiopia. Mouse is giving me a hard time. Okay. Well, just to give you a brief understanding of the northern side of Ethiopia is, is historically rich and magical places. That's the only way I can describe it. Such places as, as the 11 Raku churches of Lalibala or the Blue Nile River or the uh, royal enclosure of Gondar, which is the Camelot of Africa, uh, and also places like the active volcano that I talked about earlier. So let me go ahead and start the presentation, the uh, slides, and I'll stop in some frames and, and uh, describe it to you. This is the uh, holy city of Lalibala, 12th century church. Uh, some people call this the eighth wonder of the world. Uh, what makes this site uh, unique is the fact that these churches are made out of a single um, carved out of a single rock or uh, monolithic churches, and they're also uh, UNESCO, uh, UNESCO listed sites, heritage sites. And as you, as you can see some of these writings, before we go to this, this picture, uh, you will see some, some, some really old manuscripts and uh, paintings from, uh, from these churches. Some of, some of them are over 900 years old, uh, uh, written in Ethiopian own language and, and alphabets that you just, look, you, just, uh, you just saw. And this is um, a brand new mosque, a Sonora mosque, but it is built on a site of uh, the original mosque or Africa's first mosque, uh, which kind of shows you the, the connection of Ethiopia, not only to Christianity, but also to the religion of Islam. So these are the kind of paintings that I was talking about, 900 and uh, over 900 years old murals and churches and monasteries that you, you'll, you'll be, uh, uh, you'll be uh, exposed to. So one of the things when you go to the north, uh, uh, this kind of applies to all over the country, but the religion 
uh, practices and the, the Ethiopian Orthodox religion practices are very colorful practices and and holidays and and uh, and uh, and uh, 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 different times of the year they they do get out of the compound of the church and they get con- conduct the services are conducted and and uh, uh, outside the church so when you uh, if you get a chance to see them then you will see pictures like this uh, very beautiful and colorful, and I wish I have a recording of the actual voices so you can hear the services as well. And this is the Epiphany uh, service in the northern part of Ethiopia. Earlier I talked about a 17th century, um, uh, I'm sorry, a 4th century, 1700 years old obelisks decorated with uh, different designs. For example, the one you're looking at is uh, a door in the bottom and also um, a bunch of windows on the top. Kind of resembles the Washington National uh, Monument. And it is 1,700 years old. And uh, we kind of passed it, but I'm sure you've seen it. The royal enclosure of uh, Gondar, uh, again, a 17th century um, site. uh, nicknamed, or uh, we, we call it the Camelot of Africa because of the different castles uh, that, that, that reside in there. And here is, uh, I'm sure you know Ethiopia as the um, source of the Blue Nile River, and here is a Blue Nile River a waterfall that, that you can see in the northern part of Ethiopia as well. So different and various landscapes, such as uh, a landscape like, the, like this in the northern part, northern eastern part of Ethiopia, made out of salt and sulfuric uh, formation, um, acidic pool, basically. It, it is called the Dalul, and we'll, we'll talk about it later on in the second part of the presentation, but here is something you'll, you'll, be, uh, you'll be seeing in there as well. And we can forget the uh, Ertale volcano. By the way, Ertale means uh, a smoky mountain, and it is a uh, personal experience. It, it does smoke. So the southern part of Ethiopia, we, we are getting into the southern part. Uh, as I said earlier, it's, it's a cultura, cultural uh, montage of uh, 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 place uh, when you go to the southern part, you have different cultures. I personally witnessed at least 15 different cultures, over 30 30 something uh, languages. Uh, so, culture is uh, is what you want to concentrate when you go to the southern part of Ethiopia. This is an interesting place, but uh, 360 miles from uh, the city of Addis Ababa, there is uh, an area called Konso. It's a uh, p- uh, the Konso tribe people live there. It's naturally shaped mud towers that resemble, um, when you get close to them, they do look like uh, high-rise buildings. And because of that, it has, uh, it has a nickname. They, they call this area New York. So you can actually go to Ethiopia and say, take me to New York, and you know, you'll find yourself here. The... The United Nations UNESCO site, uh, I'm sorry, organization, uh, identified this site as one of the 160 important archaeological findings in the world. Uh, And this is called TIA. It's uh, also found in the uh, southern part of Ethiopia. And uh, it's about 36 different monuments. Some Some of them, actually about 32 of them, have some kind of carving on them. And they're still trying to figure out or decipher what the meaning of those writings are. But uh, here's another site from, from really the past and uh, age unknown at this point. One is the longest cave in Africa, about 10 miles long cave. What makes this, this cave really interesting is the fact that it has its own river that passes through it. So it is a beautiful place to, um, to, 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 to visit when you're in the southern part. And also the Bali National Mountain, uh, the second highest uh, in Ethiopia, and full of uh, uh, birds and um, pictures like this that you can take. And when you come closer to Addis Ababa, um, you have places like Hawassa and, and uh, um, 
and the uh, White Grass National Park where you can see displays like this uh, actually participate in feeding and, and take your picture. And this is the White Grass National Park I was talking about. What makes that park a little uh, interesting is the fact that it is uh, it sits right in between uh, two different lakes, Lake Jamo and Lake Abaya, and because of that, you have a, a absolutely like many, many different uh, uh, bird species and different animals. Um, for example, um, the ones that we just we just passed. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go back. All right. Well, let me. Start. I'll, I'll talk to you about that later on. But the red fox that you saw earlier is an endemic animal that's found only in Ethiopia as well, and you can find it in the uh, Bali area. And this is a, a, a kind of display that you get in the uh, Lake Jamo area, which is uh, uh, that uh, White Grass National Park that I told you about. And you have hippos and also crocodiles that uh, you can really, depending on. Um, you know, advices from your your guides. You can you can really get very close to them to take uh, good pictures. Yeah, this guy doesn't play. And I talked about culture. Um, I said about uh, personally. I mean, there are over thirty different uh, tribes around around this house uh, part of Ethiopia, but. Uh, I personally made about 15 or 16 of them, and this is one of the tribes um, that, I, again, I'll be talking about um, a ceremony called um, uh, Rite of Passage that's called uh, bull jumping in the, Hummer, in the Hummer tribe. And it's a very interesting uh, ceremony that's, uh, that's about three days long, so we'll talk about it later on, but here's an example of the dancing and the uh, uh, songs. And uh, the Dorze tribe, uh, not really far away from Addis Ababa, but known for their proficiency of uh, making cotton weaven um, clothes uh, and also known for their design of home. Uh, their design is uh, unique and, di and different and it actually resembles some animal which I'll, I'll tell you later on. This is the inside of the house. Well, I'll tell you right now. So if you look at this, uh, this house, this is a Dorze hut. If you really look at it, it does resemble some kind of animal. I don't know if you can if you can think of that animal right now, but it, it is a face, of, uh, a face of an elephant, if you look at it, and you can see the eyes on the top and the trunk, and the bottom of the trunk is the door. Uh, so um, legend has it that uh, there used to be um, elephants in that area, and when they disappeared from that area, they, uh, the people started designing their houses to look like the elephants as a reminder of the, uh, the time. All right, so we're going to the east. I hope you're not tired. We're traveling a lot. So the eastern part of Ethiopia kind of starts with one of my favorite places to go, which is the Awash National Park. Uh, it is, uh, it's, it's not far away from Addis Ababa. It's about 140 miles from Addis Ababa. Landscape, especially my favorite part, which you'll see a picture of, is uh, the sunset on, on the Awash River. It's a beautiful sunset, and if you do time yourself the right way, then you can actually get there around 5, 6 o'clock and, and, and take this picture. Uh, within the national parks, there are about 400 uh, species of birds and also uh, African oryxes uh, and other uh, wild animals as well. And because of, uh, I believe, its proximity to, to the Awash River, you do have this beautiful waterfall as well. <clears throat> so, driving down, um, down to the eastern side, uh, about 320 miles, you'll, you'll get into a, a place called, a city called Harar. This is the entrance of the city, and uh, that is uh, a very interesting city. It has a city inside its, uh, the city itself, a, a walled city called Jago, and uh, we'll, We'll see some, some pictures from there. And this is uh, an 1880 house um, that was uh, uh, believed to be uh, the house of Arthur Rimbaud, and he is uh, a French uh, um, poet who actually lived in, in that area. 
Uh, they say he lived in this house, I'm not sure, but he does have his, um, some of his work and his pictures that are displayed in this house as well. This is a walled city of uh, Jagol I was talking about. Earlier in the introduction, I mentioned this area, a, a place called Babile. It's uh, uh, rock sculptures, natural rock sculptures. That you can actually get close to it, and, uh, and, and the hike takes about uh, 30 to 35 minutes to get to the, uh, the uh, especially that rock that you see, the middle one. So the homes in the eastern part of Ethiopia, the, the, first of all, the people who live in that area are called the Hareres, and uh, their home, uh, the inside of their home, is very unique, as you see, very colorful, and the household goods that you see, uh, that you see in there are functional and usable. Once they are, they're used, they, they actually um, clean it and put it back as a de decoration to the house, so it really looks uh, beautiful. Earlier, I talked about the uh, Dorze people and how they're, uh, uh, they're really good at weaving cotton clothes. And here, in, the, in this part of the country, uh, the Hadares are known for their design, uh, skillful design of basket dishes, plates, and decorative wall uh, covers made out of grass straws or various grass straws. And those are, those are the designs that you see. And this is, um, this is that, uh, that area also where you have uh, a nightly activity of feeding the hyena. Uh, this is one of my favorite things to do when I go there, and I will um, expand a little more when we get to uh, the second part of the presentation. All right, west, west, west. We're going to the west side. As I said, when you're in Ethiopia, try to get up in the morning or stay a little um, out, out so you can see the sunset and sun, sunrises. Um, about 70 miles from Addis Ababa, there is a, a crater called Wanchi Crater. It is a beautiful uh, lake with a surrounding of uh, mountains that you can actually hike down to, to the bottom of um, where the lake is. Uh, and if you're unable to hike, of course, you have uh, horse and mule rides that, that will take you there. Nineteenth century uh, palace, um, the home of uh, that area, the, the, the uh, king of that area named Abba Jafar. and uh, this area is also known for the, bir the birthplace of coffee. So coffee came from this area, and of course you have, uh, the, uh, you know, when you go to this area, you have different uh, coffee plantations, and also wild coffee, tea plantations, tea farms, uh, all kind of stuff in this in this area, and. Uh, uh, I don't know if Almaz is here. Uh, she, she's probably in the back, but we'll, we'll get to experience Ethiopian traditional coffee later on. Uh, it is not, uh, Ethiopian traditional coffee is not drunk alone. I mean, it is a family and a social thing, so uh, we're going to be a Library of Congress family today, and we'll, we'll experience that. Here's what it looks like. Uh, this is the coffee flowers before they become actual coffee beans. Fruit and all kind of vegetable uh, are known to grow in this area as well. So this is a tea, tea uh, farm that I was talking about. So going farther in the uh, eastern side will take you to uh, a different region, uh, very close to the Sudanese border. And there you'll find different tribes, and uh, um, tribes like the Berta, Gums, uh, Shinasha tribes, with their own design of homes. I don't know if you notice the home, is, the hut is very different from the other ones that you've seen. And also a very unique uh, um, song and dance called uh, Zumbara. And this is, uh, this is a Zumbara in action. And uh, of course, I'm just pretending I'm not really participating there.
And last but not least, about 20 miles from Addis Ababa on the western side, there is a wildlife rescue uh, place where you can, it's, it's a park where you can actually go and, and uh, walk around and spend some time. And these are uh, animals, uh, uh, this is a, a, an organization called Born Free that actually keeps uh, animals uh, that, that have been hurt by different, um, uh, diff different circumstances and uh, they give them home and they, you know, you know they, they let you see and take pictures of them. So, so that's it. It's a virtual, uh, virtual travel throughout Ethiopia. So if you're not tired, I can go to the next part of the presentation. <laughs> Are we good? Okay. All right, so we do have a few minutes. So top 10 experiences that I have. I'm going to talk fast on this one as well. I kind of touched on this. Uh, uh, again, I'm kind of cheating in here. I call it experience because it is actually two places, the Awash National Park and the White Grass National Park. Uh, totally different. One is in the east, one is in the um, southern part of Ethiopia. So when you go to the Awash National Park, you have uh, the African oryxes, you have the uh, gazelles, dick dicks, uh, warthog, uh, baboons, and f over 453 different species of birds that you can, you can actually uh, visit. Uh, the sunset I talked about earlier, so we can skip, but this is a, absolutely a, a place you want to be around 4 or 5 o'clock so you can take pictures like this and actually enjoy the scenery as well. Uh, the Lake Chamo, this is in uh, White Grass National Park. You have uh, the African zebras, uh, pelicans, and different species of birds. And also you can, you can get extremely close to um, crocodiles and hippos. And what I would advise you is when you go to this place is, you know, talk to your guides. The guides do know the state of mind that the crocodile is in, so um, they can get you close to it or they, they will tell you not to get close to it. So listen to them uh, as much as possible. Hippos in general don't get close to them. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, this is the Dorze village I was, I was uh, explaining earlier, and this is the house uh, of a Dorze. Um, um, I talked about earlier, kind of touched on it. There's a, a place called the, um, sorry, the Konso tribe, about 300 miles south of uh, the Dorze area is the Konso area, and when you go there, you'll see this mud towers. They were not kind of clear or, or closed by uh, on the previous picture, but here you can see how they can resemble uh, skyscrapers, and that's why they call them uh, New York. Uh, the Konsos are also known for their uh, social activities. They are a very self-sufficient uh, group of people. Uh, you have um, the community, community homes, that's, that's the homes that you see in the bottom, designed and built by the community, and also um, uh, taken care of by the community people. So they don't, they don't have, or they don't get involved with outside people. They have their own uh, self-sufficient system. And also their, uh, their um, marker, or grave marker, or they call it waka, is, is really a unique gra gra grave marker out of... Uh, it's made out of wood, it's carved differently. But when they start telling you about this uh, grave markers, I mean, when you look at it in the picture, it doesn't mean a whole lot, but when they start explaining it to you, they, they, they have the actual stories of that, that person who died uh, in this carving. So uh, they pass uh, uh, the stories of that person from one generation to another through, uh, through the different designs of the waka. And if you are in that area, I would advise you to, to uh, get um, a Nile perch. It's, uh, it's a good place to be in. All right, number eight is a royal enclosure in Gondar. It's a 17th century, 17th century um, uh, collection of castles, and we call this area the uh, Camelot of Africa. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that I, I really enjoy is there is a church called uh, Trinity Mountain of Light Church, and when you go there, the designs, the murals, uh, these are from the 17th century. They're still vibrant, and they're still uh, beautiful, and you can, uh, you can actually visit them. And these churches, as I said earlier, are, are not only historical, but also functional, so people actually still go to these churches uh, as, of, as of today. 
This is um, uh, just a picture of that collection of uh, castles I was talking about, 17th century castles, and they're also a UNESCO uh, a heritage site as well. When you're in that area, uh, make sure you visit the city of Gondar itself, uh, and also um, hospitality in uh, Gondar is different um, it, it from other areas, so uh, unique and different, so experience that as well. And also the um, uh, Falasha or Bet Israel or House of Israel, this is once home to Ethiopia's indigenous uh, Jewish community that you can actually visit as well. Number eight is, oh, number seven, sorry, the Omo Valley or the bull jumping I was explaining. This is uh, the southern part of Ethiopia, a cultural mecca. And uh, one of the things that they do in there is uh, called uh, bull jumping. What it is is basically uh, for a young man to become an adult and, get, uh, and given a responsibility of adulthood, he actually has to jump, um, run across backs of nine or ten different uh, uh, cattles, and that's, that's what this guy is doing right now. If he makes it, he becomes the chosen one or the accomplished one, and he, he is responsible uh, enough to, to adulthood decisions such as uh, getting married. Uh, different tribes when you go to that, that part of the country. Uh, so would, I would advise you to participate in different, uh, different activities. If you, uh, if you go in the right seasons, you'll see things like Ivangadi, which is a nightly dance activity that you can join in. Uh, earlier, I talked about a 12th and 13th century rock-hewn churches, 11 of them, and this is in the uh, city of Lalibala, uh, Ethiopia's own um, uh, Jerusalem, a replica of Jerusalem. And what makes uh, this, this uh, church is unique is, as I said earlier, the fact that they are made out of single, uh, single rock or carved out of a, a single rock. And the picture you're looking at right now, and uh, here is a, a more fuller picture here, is uh, the House of St. George or Beta Gorgis, known as in, in, in Amharic. And when you go there, there it, it, in addition to the 11 churches, you do have other churches that you can visit, such as the 30-minute uh, drive from, from Lalibala, you'll find the Na'akot al -Ab, another interesting uh, monastery carved out of natural natural cave. Number five is the feeding of the hyena. That is in the eastern part of Ethiopia. So instead of me trying to describe it, let me just kind of read two paragraphs from the book. So the nightly performance of feeding hyena is distinctive to the city of Har. Tiedros, this is the guy who actually feeds the hyenas, one of the hyena feeding experts starts by uttering words to summon the unpredictable wild animals. As the reluctant hyenas gather to start the show, spectators are told to stand in a small and dusty area lit by headlights. Children assist Tiedros by bringing sacks, of, sacks full of meat rejected from local butchers. The first reaction of a sheer disbelief and amaz amazement quickly gives away to a desire to participate. This is from personal experience. Initially, a piece of meat looped around the end of a long stick is used to feed the hyenas. As the comfort levels, uh, level of the participant increases, the length of the stick is shortened for a closer and more intense experience. Uh, here, uh, this is a this is, I would say, about after 10 minutes. Uh, this, the top picture that you see is after, um, I would say, the first thing that you would do, like you extend it with your hand. You're still scared. You're not sure if you're getting your hand back. But once you get to minute 10 or 15, uh, you start uh, feeding it with your, with your mouth. And, uh... Going to Ethiopia, one of the things I would, um, I would advise you is uh, try to uh, time yourself uh, to catch religion holiday celebrations, or uh, if, you, if you can't do that, then uh, try to catch uh, market days, open market days. They're very colorful. Uh, people come out dressed, uh, cultural dresses, uh, head, hair, hairdos, and different jewelries distinctive to that, that area. So time yourself so you can see, uh, you can see this, this event. For example, this is an epiphany in the uh, town of uh, Raya, and this is another one in the uh, Tigray region. Uh, 
All right, number three experience is two different landscapes. The first one is the Dalul, uh, and the second one is the Semin Mountain National Park. Uh, Dalul is a colorful bubble, green, yellow, sulfuric uh, lake formed by uh, intrusion of magma and salt deposits. Uh, when you go to this area, the landscape is really coated with, uh, with uh, salt. So you're actually walking in salt in some places. So this is what it looks like. Uh, of course, you know, you're not advised to taste the water because it is acidic and it's uh, sulfuric, so it does uh, do damages to garments, but when you look at it from, from your lens and, you know, with wide-angle lenses, it is, it is just an amazing scene. When you're in that area, um, try to learn about, you know, everything you want to know about salt, um, how salt com becomes... Um, they get salt out of the, um, the Afdera Lake, um, take the water out, evaporate the water, um, and get, get uh, salt that's usable. Um, and of course, they also use the, the fact that it is extremely hot in that area. They use it for evaporating the, uh, evaporating the water. The next one is the Semin National Park, and it is uh, uh, one of the highest, the highest peak in Ethiopia. The Ras Dashan Mountain is located here. Uh, that mountain is about 14,900 feet uh, high. It's only about 4,000 feet shy of the tallest mountain in Africa, which is the uh, uh, Mount Kilimanjaro, which is 19,300. So there is, uh, if you're interested in climbing that, there is a 10 days um, uh, climbing schedule that you can actually register and climb, climb the, whole, the, whole, the whole mountain. Oops, sorry. This is that uh, baboon that I was telling you about, very endemic to that area. Uh, it's called the bleeding heart baboon because it has uh, an opening of, uh, the skin is missing from the heart area, so they call it the bleeding heart uh, baboon. All right, number two is uh, actually two, two places. One is uh, called, uh, the one on the right side uh, that you see me climbing up is, uh, is called Debra Damo. It's uh, a, a flat mountain. Flat Top Mountain or Amba, it's a sixth century monastery that's actually located there. Uh, you do have to climb about 50 feet before you get to the uh, entrance to the door. Uh, so it is uh, for people like me who have not or do not have a rock climbing experience, uh, just getting to church is a very difficult thing to do when you're here. Um, so once you get in there, you have a collection of manuscripts uh, from a um, from long time ago, and also the design of the, the church itself uh, is, is from uh, one of the earliest in, in Ethiopia. When I was there in 2009, uh, just to give you a perspective, the, the size of the, the, the top of the mountain is about 3,000 by 1,000 feet, and there are about 350 uh, monks living there, so it's a very crowded place up there. And this is what the, on the left side, this is what the uh, mountain looks like from, from a distance. The second one is uh, Fazer Yamata, or Abuna Yamata. That's another church about 80 miles from another big, big city in uh, Ethiopia called uh, Makale. And it is within the uh, collection of churches called, <clears throat> sorry, the Gararta Cluster. <clears throat> Those are uh, sixth and seventh century churches. Uh, located in mountaintops, cliffs. For example, the one you're looking at, uh, Mount Abuna Yamata, is uh, located on a 2,500 feet, feet cliff that you have to actually climb up. And like the one before, there is no, uh, there is no assistance of um, uh, a rope or anything like that, so uh, leap of faith is the only thing you have to go on. <laughs> All right, so we are getting to the number one experience. Um, the Ertale, this is an active volcano. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to tell you a couple of words or three or four words because I'm not going to try to describe this thing because it is, for me, it is beyond words. But when I was there, I was thinking about how hot it is, how noisy it is, how beautiful it is, scary it is, smoky, unpredictable, and very, very large. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a picture or a video so you can judge for yourself. Kind of started from the middle.
one last one. All right, so as a conclusion, let me uh, conclude by bringing back this, uh, this uh, slide, as I told you earlier. So in the northern part of Ethiopia, I showed you uh, natural histories, uh, I'm sorry, nat nature, uh, White Grass National Park, Summit Mountain National Park, Dalul, sulfuric acid. Uh, in the feeding the hyena and the volcano, I showed you his um, adventure. In the bull jumping and the Omo Valley people, I showed you culture. And in the Gondar and Aksum area, I showed you nature, um, uh, history, sorry. Red fox, ibex, bleeding heart, heart baboon, wildlife viewing. And of course, and as far as relaxing, I showed you the uh, Awash River sunset, Hawasa waterfront, and the Blue Nile River. So there's only one more thing to, 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 to ask you, which is, shouldn't Ethiopia be part of your list for top places to visit? So I'm going to end it that way. So the question was about the uh, Konso grave markers. And uh, the Konso village or the Konso area is about, um, about 420 or 450 miles from Addis Ababa, the center of the country. Uh, and the, uh, it is not, uh, um, it's not very close to uh, Kenya. I mean, after that, you have the Omo Valley tribe. So it's not very close to it. But the, you're asking me who the people are and the, sorry, the Konso village people or the Konso tribe. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about the the other reference you're you're talking about. So I have no idea. But it could, it could be similar, uh, similar um, telling story about the deceased. So. More The dam is on the western uh, part of Ethiopia. You're talking about the uh, the large dam, right? Yeah, that is on the western part of Ethiopia. I I did go all the way to the uh, the border, which is the uh, Sudanese border, but I haven't seen anything that affects the 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 um, uh, that area. So I, d I don't know for sure if it does really affect uh, the tribes around the, that area. I'm not sure. It is a restricted area, so I'm not, I was not able to actually get close to uh, close to the dam area. Somebody has a question. Yes, sir. Absolutely, uh, a cradle of humankind. Uh, the, the question was, I did not mention Lucy. Uh, that's a very interesting observation. It is on my second book, which is the, the, the books that you'll be uh, looking at uh, when you go to the reception. And Lucy is one of the, uh, one of the stars of the book. And uh, uh, Lucy is located in Addis Ababa right now. And uh, when you go to the uh, National Museum, one of the things that you'll, you'll observe is it's not only Lucy, but you have uh, Ardi and also Salam, who are also uh, actually older than Lucy, uh, over four million years old. Lucy is about three point something. Uh, so thank you for reminding me, and, uh, and Ethiopia is the, uh, uh, you know, because of Lucy that we, can, we, we do go back a long time, three, some, three to four million years old uh, uh, skeletons in Ethiopia. So thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Okay. So I'm 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 hearing two different questions. One uh, one is the wildlife is uh, is minimizing or disappearing because of uh, de deforestation in different areas. The second one is the the tribes in the southern part of Ethiopia are are getting more mo modernized and this, this different cultures may not exist in, in the near future. I guess those are the two questions, right? Okay. As far as uh, uh, deforestation, uh, I have, um, uh, when, when I was in uh, the Semi National Mountain Park, uh, mm -hmm. that is uh, in the Gondar area, one of the things that I, I, I heard or I uh, experienced is the fact that the uh, tourism you know, in Ethiopia is trying to actually promote uh, people to get out of the park because people are actually living in the park at this point. So they're, they're actually encouraging them to get out of the park so they can live somewhere else. But from what I heard from the people in that area or the people who are responsible to do this, they're saying it is, uh, it is much more difficult than it, it seems, so it's going to take time is what, what I heard. But what you're saying might also be true. So I don't, you know, personally, I don't know a whole lot about uh, the, the different uh, different activities that happen to to preserve wildlife. The second one, the Hummer uh, and the, the the tribes in the Omo Valley. You're absolutely right. They do change, uh, so that's why I'm encouraging people to go now, <laughs> to go soon, go see them before they change. Maybe one more. Yes, sir. Uh, I have three questions. Okay. Those are three questions. Okay. Uh, so what is common about, the, you know, all my travels throughout Ethiopia, what is common about the whole country is the first question. The second question is about mentioning the Adua Mountains and the historical significance of Adua. The third one is the, the actual name, Addis Ababa versus Addis Ababa. So, all right. So as far as the first question, I do... Um, I uh, have one commonality that I see throughout Ethiopia, which is hospitality of the people and how, uh, and, and this is, the, I'm not selling, but his, how nice the people are. Uh, wherever you go, diff, you know, regardless of how uh, different language they speak, the, the hospitality is really uh, common throughout Ethiopia. So that, that I would mention as number one. As far as Adua is concerned, I, did, I do have the uh, Adua Mountain and the history of Adua on my first book. You will, you will witness it or you will see it. And one of the things I mentioned earlier when, when I started the presentation was you know, Ethiopia is, is just a vast country and trying to cover every, everything in Ethiopia is, is, is just very difficult. So I do have it in the book and you will see it in the uh, uh, Ethiopia Inspiring Journey book. Uh, Addis Ababa versus Addis Ababa. Uh, this is the, um, uh, the, uh, one of the things that, that it really took a long time to, to uh, decide what to name the book. But here is the reason behind it. Uh, when, when I go to uh, Addis Ababa, uh, official places in Addis Ababa, the, the official name in the country is Addis Ababa. Uh, maps are saying Addis Ababa. Uh, official government uh, documents say Addis Ababa. So if I call it what it is uh, that you and I know, then it's going to be very difficult to find uh, for people who, who want to know about Addis Ababa. So that was the reason or the logic behind it. But I do understand uh, the, the correct pronunciation of Ababa uh, uh, is, is Ababa, which is flower. So those are the reasons. All right. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.